Hello everyone. Welcome back to my class of company law and secretarial practice. So in this class, let me deal with the incorporation stage that is a very important second stage of a formation of a company. And in connection with this, what are the secretarial duties? I am Dr. Indraini Kati. So let us begin with the class. And before going to my class, you know, if you are not yet subscribed, do subscribe and like the video as well as share it to your friends, right? So let's move on to the second important stage, which is called as incorporation stage, okay? Section three, subsection one of the Companies Act 2013 says that to incorporate a company, to get it registered company, when we are establishing a company first, we need to register our company, okay? So you have learned in my earlier class, what is the first stage? How about that? And what are the secretarial duties in connection with the promotion of a company, okay? The first stage is a promotion stage. Second one is incorporation stage. Third one is capital subscription stage. And the last one is commencement of business, okay? So here, this is a second stage wherein a section, subsection one of section three of the Companies Act 2013 speaks about the number of members, okay? So with this number, at least the company has to get it registered, okay? A company may be formed for any lawful purpose. The main intention is what? Uh, purpose of the business should be lawful. The objectives of an organization for which you are establishing should be lawful, legal, okay? So a company may be formed for lawful purpose by seven or more persons, okay? By seven or more persons where the company to be formed is to be public company. Company to be formed is to be a public company. So everybody knows what is the minimum number of members required to establish, required to incorporate a company is seven. Minimum seven should be there for a public company. Minimum two members should be there for a private company. And one more kind of private company is there. What is called as? It is called as OPC, one person company, where a single person is required, right? One person where a company to be formed is to be one person company. That is to say private company. It means what? Private companies are of two types. One is minimum two or more members may be there. That is also called as a private company. And one more is there. That is one person. That is OPC is a kind of private company itself. Okay. So here, let me go through all this one more time. A company may be formed for any lawful purpose by seven or more persons where a company to be formed is to be a public company, two or more persons where a company to be formed is to be a private company, one person where a company to be formed is OPC or one person company, that is to say a private company by subscribing their names. What these people will do? The minimum number of members will have to subscribe their names or his name. His name is applicable to OPC company. Okay. Their name is applicable to the above two categories that is public limited and private company limited with two or more than two persons. Okay. So their name to the they have to subscribe their names to the memorandum, okay? Memorandum and complying with the requirements of this act in respect of registration. So the members, minimum required members to get a company registration is seven, two, and one, okay? So let's move on to the procedure. What is that procedure to be followed? Further, section three, Subsection 2 of company formed under subsection 1, that is just now we have gone through section 1, okay? Maybe either a company limited by shares or a company limited by guarantee or an unlimited company. It means section 3, subsection 2 focuses on the company form that is limited by shares may be there, limited by guarantee may be there or an unlimited company may be there public, private, or OPC, which may be formed in these three kinds, okay? So let's move on to the incorporation of the company, how it is all done. Once the documents have been prepared, stamped, and signed, they must be filed with the ROC in incorporating the company, which are mentioned as below. So as everybody knows, not just the member's requirement is to be complied, uh, but the legal requirements and the documentation and the information, what all are to be furnished, those are all to be complied with and filed with the ROC. Then only the people will get or the members will get the company registered. Okay. So what are the 
important documents that are to be filed with the ROC to get it incorporated. One is memorandum of association. Second one is articles of association. Third one, the address for correspondence. Okay, here Pakka, the address is not yet mentioned, but here you need to mention before you uh, establish your registered office. Okay, the address for correspondence till its registered office is established. And the fourth criteria is, fourth condition is the particulars of name and address nationality of every subscriber to the memorandum it means memorandum should have to be subscribed with the minimum number whatever you have learned in the earlier slide for a public company seven members should have to subscribe for a private company two or more more than two members should have to be subscribed at least minimum number of members have to subscribe to the memorandum okay what they have to furnish their name and address okay and nationality as well as the proof of identity. These four things are very, very important. Whose names are subscribed to the memorandum, they have to furnish all this information. And fifth condition is the particulars of the persons mentioned in the articles. Now, just now you have gone through the memorandum, okay, subscribers to the memorandum. In the fifth point, the particulars of persons mentioned in the articles. Articles of association is the second important document, wherein, again, the persons should have to mention their members and in that who are the first directors of the company will be mentioned okay so in the articles the particulars of the persons who are ready to act as the first directors of the company their names addresses and din number it is called as director identification number okay so that is also to be mentioned over there and nationality with proof of identity whose names are mentioned in the articles as the first directors their information is to be furnished and sixth information is that is related to forms relating to directors okay forms to be filled by the directors so first form is a list of directors with address and din okay and the second document is written consent of directors that they will to they are willing to act as a directors potential directors of the company as well as uh, uh, what do you know, the qualified number of shares they will have to buy and they wish to buy the required qualification shares to act as a director. So likewise, undertaking and form is to be filled by them. That is a written consent of the directors to act as director. Okay. And last document is a declaration is to be given. So what the declaration is all about? A declaration should be in the prescribed form made by an advocate, you know, it is in the prescribed form. In the MCA, it will be mentioned, right? In the act, it is mentioned how it should be. A declaration is to be made by them. The format ready-made template is available. In the same way, they will have to uh, make a declaration. Who are these people? They have to mention, uh, they should have to prescribe. Yeah, the declaration should be prescribed from, uh, uh, prescribed form made by an advocate or a chartered accountant or a cost accountant or CS in practice who is engaged in the formation of a company. It means while uh, forming the company during the promotion stage as well as in the incorporation stage who are engaged. They may be either an advocate or a chartered accountant or a cost accountant or a company secretary in practice. So either of these people should have to sign there and make a declaration, okay? And by a person along with these, either of them, along with one, one more is required, that is, and by a person named in the articles as a director, okay? In the articles, director name is mentioned along with all the proofs just now you have gone through, okay? So articles as a director, manager or a secretary of the company so the these people are, will have to submit the things okay by a person named in the articles as a director manager or a secretary of a company that all the requirements of this act and the rules of of registration have been complied with means what all the legal requirements are there those are all complied with these are all followed, okay? So likewise, they have to make a declaration and that declaration should have to be signed by these people only, okay? So next one, according to section seven, subsection two, the register verifies, you know, after submitting all these documents and the information, what all are there? Just now we are learned in the earlier slide, all those points, after those are all filed with an ROC. Now, ROC will verify all the documents, okay? 
and information in the register and he will record it everything in the register he will file it up and issues a certificate of incorporation when does he issue if he is satisfied with all this then he will issue a certificate of incorporation in the prescribed form to the effect that the proposed company is incorporated under this act okay under the 2013 act a company is going to be incorporated likewise he will give it okay next is the registrar shall allot the company a co corporate identity number you know identity card should be given identity number should be given you know likewise uh, whatever the i card is given in the same way company every company which is registered under the companies act will be getting one cin number that is corporate identity number and which should be included in the certificate also in the incorporation certificate this number is going to be mentioned okay the company should maintain and preserve copies of all documents and information as originally filed at its registered office till its dissolution it means there is a condition in the act only what is that the things what all are filed as original with the roc all the documents should have to be maintained properly preserved properly by the company okay till its dissolution till it gets dissolved till that period it has to be all the documents should have to be uh, kept properly filed properly okay so this document is that incorporation certificate is a birth certificate of the company and is a proof of the existence of the company too that's why the company when it is registered then we call it as it has taken a birth okay so once this certificate is issued the company cannot cease its existence unless it is dissolved by the order of court okay so next little bit some more points are covered under section 12 okay it speaks about registered office of the company so there just notice is given that uh, till the proper address of the registered office of the organization you have given just an address over there in the document uh, while registering your company but here section 12 speaks about registered office of the company when it has to be properly addressed okay from the 15th day of its incorporation from the 15th day of its incorporation a company shall have to shall have a registered office to receive and acknowledge all communications and notices addressed to it it means what after 15th day it should have its own registered office okay that's why from the 15th day of its incorporation the company's proper address registered office address should be mentioned so that all communication can be made to the same address that is one condition second condition is what the company shall furnish the registrar okay furnish to the registrar company has to give its address to the registrar within 30 days from the uh, incorporation 30 days within this 30 days it has to provide this that's why the company shall furnish to the registrar verification of its registered office within a period of 30 days of its incorporation in such a manner as may be prescribed so this is also very important section 12 it is covered with this part okay so let's move on to the last part of discussion that is duties of a company secretary in relation to incorporation of this incorporation stage of a company okay so company secretary must be there what are his duties in connection with the incorporation of a company so before incorporation all the arrangements are made by the company secretary along with the promoters of the company okay so now during incorporation stage what he has to do so to arrange for filing the application of registration okay so to get it registered he has to file an application for the registration to pay the necessary stamp duty filing fees and registration charges unless the fees are paid nothing is possible over here to get it registered also to get the incorporation certificate from the roc the company secretary has to pay what all the stamp duties there filing fees are there and registration charges okay next one to confirm the compliance of all the legal requirements before submitting all the documents to the registrar roc before filing all these things he has to get the confirmation of 
all the legal requirements, whether all of them are complied with or not. Okay. So, and the last one is to obtain the certificate of incorporation from the ROC within the specified date only. Okay. So, he has to go there and collect the certificate of incorporation from the ROC. And here, the condition is what, you know, if a company is a private company limited, Okay, it is entitled to start its business once it gets the registration certificate, that is incorporation, certificate of incorporation. If it is given to a private company, a private company can begin its operations, business operations soon after the incorporation. But the public company will have to go through two more stages, you know. What are those? The first one is uh, third stage, we can say it as capital subscription stage and the commencement stage. These two stages are applicable to a private com public company limited. If it is a private company, then there is no need to go for these two because capital is already subscribed by their own group of private people and it can begin its operations. Whereas a public company will begin its operations after getting the commencement certificate from the ROC. That is, first it has to comply with or it has to raise the required amount of capital that itself is called as capital subscription stage. After that, after going through all the things, the ROC will issue the commencement certificate. After getting the commencement certificate, the public company is going to commence its operations okay so till now you have learned uh, uh, what is what do you mean by incorporation stage and what are the requirements are there and what are the secretarial duties in connection with this okay thank you very much i'll come with further two more steps also in the next video thank you